All right, guys, so this week we are going to focus on science and art creations. Um, so we are going to be creating these snowflake um, salt artworks. Um, so you, if you look at the instructions um, in the module for this assignment, you will see a picture of a book included called Snowflake Bentley. Um, and if you look below the picture of that book, you'll see a link for the read aloud here. Um, you can listen to that as you work on this project. Um, that link can also be used with your students in your classroom if you maybe don't have access to the book um, or if you just want to have them hear a different voice reading the book aloud to them. Um, or you could also use this if you want to do something with groups um, or if you need students to listen to the book individually and then maybe you do this activity with them after. So there's a little bit of uh, different ideas you can do with this, but I thought that book would go well um, with this. So even though it's science, we can incorporate the literacy component in here. Um, so the way that this works with science and art, um, salt absorbs the water moisture um, because it is attracted to the highly polar water molecules. Um, and this property means that salt um, is hydroscopic um, and that is where the it absorbs liquid water, um, such as either your watercolor paint, your food coloring mix, um, and water vapor in the air. So we will be using salt. Um, if you look on the instructions as you're creating this project, you can also use sugar. Um, but for this purpose, we're going to use salt. Um, it might be an interesting comparison, especially if you have time, um, either while you're creating this project, um, or maybe if you take this idea and project and activity into your classroom, you could have students do a comparison as well. And that could also be part of the um, science component. You could have them come up with a hypothesis. Um, you could have them compare the results. It could be, you know, something simple, like I said, you know, with the sugar and the salt. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that you can take this project. So um, what you need for this project is you need a snowflake design. So I did draw my snowflake design out on a piece of paper. Um, I would prefer you to use white paper um, or something cream, not necessarily color, but for demonstration purposes, I thought this would show up a little bit better. Um, I would recommend a kind of cardstock uh, paper. This is kind of more of a cardstock. It's a little bit thicker. Um, so if you have watercolor paper or a mixed media paper, if you only have like a computer paper or sketchbook paper, that will do. You might want to kind of double them up um, because the absorption of the liquid um, may kind of tear into the paper and it may end up ripping the paper. I'm not exactly sure because I do have access to the water or to a cardstock and watercolor paper. Um, they're usually not very expensive. Mixed media paper um, is not bad. You can usually go buy a piece or two here. Or if you want to use something like cardboard um, or like a poster board paper, unfortunately, it may not absorb the moisture as well as a regular piece of paper that's a little, just a little bit thicker. Um, but use what you got um, with what you have. Um, you also need watercolor paints. This is a pretty cheap set um, that I just had lying around. Um, you can use any color of the watercolor. Um, you can use liquid watercolors in the tubes. Um, you can also use food coloring if you have that in your cabinet. So don't feel like you have to go buy things, but you will need one of those three. So either watercolor paint, um, some type of liquid watercolor, or food coloring. And you only need one color, um, but if you end up buying this, obviously you'll have multiple colors to use here. Um, you also need a paintbrush and a cup of water. Um, if you buy a little pack like this, it should come with a paintbrush, so you shouldn't have to buy that separately. Um, you can get these at dollar stores and things like that, or Walmart or different places like that. You don't have to necessarily go to like an art store and spend that kind of money unless you just want to. Um, so a cup of water and a paintbrush, if you do not have one, you will need some glue. Mine is clear, um, but you can get the white glue, but just kind of a, a school bottle glue. Um, and then you need salt. Mine is more of a coarse kosher salt that I'm gonna be using because that's what I had in the cabinet that needed to be used up. Um, so I'm going to use that for the project, but you can use finely grated salt. If you end up doing the sugar comparison, you can use that as well. Um, but you need some type of salt. I wouldn't do anything that's too thick. Um, the floral, this kosher salt is a little bit thicker, um, which you guys will see. Um, I think it gives it a pretty good design, um, but you need some kind of salt. So I'm going to demonstrate here. So like I said, for time purposes, um, I already have my template drawn out. So once you get your template drawn out, there is also a link to some templates. Um, if you would like to use those, I've attached those in that module for this activity. Um, you can print one of those out and you can use that as your basis. Or if you take this activity into your classroom or program, you can use it there as well. For mine, I did decide to draw mine. Um, 
So what I'm going to do first is once you have your template, whatever you, if you use a printed template or if you draw your own, um, it does not also necessarily have to be this big. Um, once again, mine is mainly for demonstration purposes. So now I'm going to take my glue and I'm going to fill in all the parts of the snowflake with glue and then I'm going to cover it with salt. As you see, I have a piece of newspaper underneath to kind of catch everything. And then that way when I'm ready to, I can kind of shake off the um, excess salt. So I'm going to go ahead and work on that now for a few minutes. Um, and then when we're finished, we will come back and I will move on to the next step with you guys. Okay, so now I have my snowflake here. So um, you do want to let this dry just a little bit. Um, I, um, for time purpose, created another snowflake that has been drying um, for at least a day. Um, so this, I would say, needs to dry for a good couple minutes if you're trying to do the project all at one time. Um, but if you have time, maybe let it sit off to the side and dry. As you see, I also used a piece of paper to catch some of the salt behind it, and I can clean that up later. Um, so as you see here, I've done my glue and my salting process. So I'm going to move this off to the side. Um, I also think leaving it um, on the whole piece of paper, or if you cut it out and then glue it, um, or have it behind some kind of cardboard or more sturdy structure, that'll help when you're trying to get the um, excess salt off of the paper. So I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to go ahead and use my one that's been drying um, as the next demonstration. So I'm going to move this one off to the side. So this one has been drying, like I said, for at least a day. 
as you can see, I have practiced one of the demonstrations over here. So once you have your um, snowflakes and you have your saw and the glue has dried and everything, then this is where you're going to bring in your watercolor, your food coloring, whatever you decide that you're going to use. Um, so, and your cup of water. So if you've never used watercolors before, um, you do have to activate the paint by using water, hence the term watercolor. Um, so even if you're using kind of more of these school-based, I want to say like a cheaper paint uh, version um, palette, you still will have to take water. So I'm going to just take my paintbrush. I have a different paintbrush here. I would recommend using the one that comes with it. But for this purpose, I want to cover more space at a time. Um, you can also use the paintbrush for the food coloring. Just kind of sprinkle the food coloring on there and you'll see how it absorbs. So as you see, I have one that I did a purple demonstration on. I'm going to try a different color. Um, it looks like I have a good amount of orange Oops, left in my palette. So I'm going to try the orange now. So I'm going to get my water. I'm going to kind of activate the watercolor paint. So let's see. So you want a pretty good amount of water in there. You know, you want it to become kind of liquidy. If you're using a liquid watercolor, this may be a little bit different. You may not need to do all this process. All right, so once I have my watercolor activated, let me move this over here out of the way so it's close by. So once I have this activated, then I'm merely just going to paint over. So this needs a little bit. You kind of want it to be a little more runny because you kind of want the salt to just absorb it all. And like I said, I used a coarse kind of kosher salt. So that's what I had in the cabinet to be used up. So mine may also look at a little bit different than if you use a fine granulated salt or if you're using sugar, but kind of see how the salt begins to absorb the watercolor here. And a paint that was a good one. I don't know if you guys saw how that how the water kind of trickled down and was really absorbed. The more liquidy it is, it kind of absorbs a little bit more. So I'm gonna paint this so you guys kind of get the process. Like I said, my paint's coming up a little bit. Um this is why it's recommended to use some kind of like cardstock or a mixed media paper. Um, like I said, you could try computer paper or maybe even cardboard. I'm not sure how exactly well it would hold up. Um, once you get the glue and the salt and everything on it, it may become too heavy. Um, so for now, hopefully you guys kind of get the process. You're just kind of painting over it. So it's not a super complex um, or complicated um, assignment. It just takes a little bit of time. So I'm going to go ahead and actually finish this completely. Um, I'm going to do a couple different colors just so you guys can maybe see how different colors would be absorbed by the salt and how they may look. So I'm going to go ahead and work on that now so you guys hang tight and we'll come back to this at the end.
All right, guys, so here is the final product. Um, if you guys can see, let me bring it a little bit closer there. There we go. Um, so as you can see, I did red, green, yellow, orange, purple, and brown. I wanted to try a kind of a variety of different colors. Um, I wasn't sure how some of the colors would show up, especially because I was using more of a green cardstock. Um, but the colors actually absorbed really well. Um, you can kind of obviously see some of the green through. That's okay. That's expected. That's why it would be better to use um, either a white um, or a cream for the project um, when you're doing this so that if you have those kind of pieces that poke through. Um, but the yellow showed up a little bit more than I expected. I don't know if it's because of the green contrast with the background here, um, but the yellow did show up. So you do not have to do, you can do multicolors. Um, your students may want to do multicolors. Um, they may find that experimentation um, interesting um, and visually um, aesthetic to them, um, but you do not have to do it. Like if you're using food coloring and you only have red or blue or green or one specific color, obviously you can try to mix the food coloring if you want. Um, or if you just go buy one small tube of watercolor paint um, or a palette that's just one specific color, just has a few colors, you can do that, just one color as well. I just wanted to do a little bit of experimentation with this. Um, there are a lot of other science projects you can do with watercolor as well um, for any level K-12. Um, so if you're interested in that or you have more questions about that, I can uh, explain those a little bit more individually on some previous projects I have done with students. Um, but I hope you guys found this project interesting. Um, I hope you feel like maybe something you could take to your students. Um, this should be pretty adaptable to all levels. I know some of you are early education, um, like zero or birth to year six. Um, so this could be very adaptable for many age levels, maybe closer to the five, six age levels um, if you're in early childhood education. But I'm sure you can maybe either do a smaller scale version of this um, as long as the students had assistance. Um, you know, or maybe you had things pre-cut for them, kind of like I had a pre-template drawn or a few print templates or things like that. So um, let me go if you guys have any questions and I hope you enjoy this activity.